YouTubers. Uh, I caught some flack for this last one. Everybody thought I was nuts, but I think it worked. Roasting a maple neck in a smoker. And people are just like, you're stupid. And I was like, okay, whatever. Uh, we don't know until we learn. But my first experiment, I believe, was a huge success. Um, as you can see, there is a definite change in, uh, in the color of the wood, in the, the resonance of the wood. When you ring on it, it's got killer ring tone. It's much lighter. I can tell right off the bat that it's lighter. It wasn't an even roast. As you can see, I got a couple little toasty parts here. Um, but I'm pretty sure that'll sand out because it's an it's an unsanded neck So just waiting on the truss rod from uh, from Stumac, but people think I'm absolutely nuts But you know what they want like eight hundred dollars by the time I got all the bells and whistles that I wanted to put on it With the ebony fretboard and with all the inlay and stuff like that They wanted I can't say eight hundred dollars, but like four hundred bucks for a neck Dude, this is like, I don't know, $13 worth of maple, and my smoker pellets probably cost a buck and a half by the time I'm done smoking it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. Roasted neck, again, on the Traeger. Um, as you can see, it is dead flat. It didn't warp or twist. There are no cracks in it. There's no nothing. I slowly bring it up from 170. I just put on the smoke uh, from 170, and then I slowly bump it up to about 350 for I think it was two and a half hours and then I slowly brought it back down and uh, that would this is the dude that's success is what I would say so we're gonna try it again and this time you can watch everything that I do for all you people that think I'm nuts far out I'm making roasted maple necks in my Traeger so uh, so here we go I've got one set in there and and um, I don't know if you can see I found this I believe this is a rebar um, uh, a rebar stand from when I worked at Chef Steel um, they use this to prop rebar up before they weld it and that's just uh, because remember see where the The dark spot hit here. That's because the heat was coming out of here So I put the my my wife don't tell my wife um, I put my wife's uh, pampered chef little baking thing there to to even the heat out and a big uh, uh, big socket in there just because it's metal to lift it up and uh, over here We shouldn't have that problem because um, it wasn't flipped over This is when it where it got burned because it was flipped over and the heat was coming out of there So I think that fixed that and uh, yeah for an all-over an all-over Experiment I think it turned out great. So here we go. We're gonna bump it on to smoker fumar um, Just in case you care. These are cherry flavored chips <laughs> Like that matters um, I should be using the cheapest ones, but these are all we got. So, uh, um, yeah, cherry flavored smoke in my Traeger. We'll be back. All right, it's been about a half an hour. I just bumped it up to the 180 mark. Uh, our patient's doing fine. Lots of smoke in there. And, uh, oh, yep, here we go. All right, we're at 180, 177. I said it at 180, but it's a uh, and the beauty of it is you can tell exactly what the temperature is. Let's see how our patient's doing. Lots of smoke going on and no warping, no cracking as of yet. We're going to bump it up now to uh, go to 250 just, just because we're crazy like that. So 250, it's been an hour. We're going um, to check our pellets here. Oh, doing good with pellets. Uh, again, uh, been an hour, so we're going to bump it up to... To the 250 and maybe in another half an hour we'll bump it up to the to the 350 and uh let it sit there for a while and marinate all right um i did my homework on this uh torification is heat uh in a vacuum and what that does is it um is it allows the sugars in the wood to crystallize and uh, takes all the moisture out of the out of the wood and that's that's why the um that's why the fretboard or the, the neck is so much lighter and it rings so much better. So there are definite um, benefits to that. Obviously, a lighter neck and um, and more ringtone gives you more sustain, and uh, it's it's just a better product. And feel on the hands is great. I really really enjoyed the 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 one I played because it was like a it was like that natural finish for an old old 50s telly. So um, I understand that torification is, is the vacuum and, and that's how they remove a lot of the, the warping and twisting and cracking and stuff like that because it precisely 
um, removes the, the humidity from the wood and that's where you get the cracking and the twisting. I get that. Uh, this maple that I'm using has been in my shop literally for years and in a controlled environment, it's very dry to start with. So I'm sure if you used a greener wood, it would split and warp and crack and, and I get that. I understand that um, for those of you who have given me uh, total flack. And if this fails, dude, I... I failed, you know, and how do you, how do you, uh, how do you learn? How do you, how do you accomplish things unless you try something? Um, if I'm out, I'm out, what, 20 bucks in maple? Not a problem. But uh, if, if I, if I can do this and share it with the rest of the world that yes, you can make a roasted neck in your, in your smoker far out, you know, we, we've accomplished something and uh, the home luthiers can, uh, can roast their own necks. So uh, thank you for, your, for those of you who had faith in me and for those of you who think I'm an idiot, it is what it is, I'm, uh, uh, I'm learning. How's that? Cool. Let's, uh, behind me it's like at 100 and let's go see. We're at 100 and 194 is where we're at and uh, it's doing fine. There we go. All right, we are up to 290. I've been bumping it up slowly. We're gonna make the final Final jump to 325 and leave it there. Let's check on our patient. Again, no warping, no cracks. I'm starting to golden up pretty good. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And this time, uh, because I've got it lifted, there's no no char marks on it. That's just grease right there from the from up at the inside of my thing. That'll sand right out. But uh, yeah, it, it's looking looking really good. Starting to bring that flame out in it. Yeah, buddy. Almost two hours into it. 3.30. Trying to get nice. Amber color. No splits. No cracks. No warps. Loving it. I'm loving it. Three hours in. Bumped it up to 3.50. I just opened the gate because I flipped it over. Flipped it over because it was getting a little darker on the top side than it was on the bottom just to give it an easy, even roast. And as you can see, it is uh, it's coming right along, man. Nice and straight, no cracks, no warps. Uh, what does look like a burn is just grease from uh, brisket, I believe, so no worries there. But the, the figure's really starting to pop and uh, the amber's color really starting to come in. Cool. All right, check on our patient. I've got it in shutdown mode, so it's cooling off. But as you can see, just beautiful caramel color, straight as an arrow. A little bit of charring back there, but I really don't, I think it adds character to it. Um, yeah, I got the truss rods and the frets in today. I made the fretboard yesterday. So uh, we'll glue it up and get shaping on it. But uh, when I pull it out, I'll do some more video. I'm just excited about my stuff being here. And uh, yeah, I think this is successful, I really do. All right guys, back in the shop with our patient. Um, just got it mocked up uh, because I'm excited about starting some carving on it too. Uh, here's the other one. That's for the original neck that we did. But uh, yeah, here we go. Let me let me pull this off and let's get a good look at this. Yeah, uh, fretboard that I've chosen for it is a, a piece of Coca Bolo. My uncle Bob. Yep. Yeah, insert Bob your uncle. Uh, joke here, uh, but it's a piece of Coca Bolo that I cut down. He gave me a four by four of Coca Bolo. It's been kicking around the shop forever, and I'm like, what am I going to do with this giant chunk of Coca Bolo? Apparently, I'm going to make uh, fretboards, and I'll do a video on that on how to make a vet fretboard next. But here is our patient, um, beautifully ambered, as you can see. I've got a piece of uh, raw. I get this piece of raw maple here that has been has not been roasted so you can see the difference and the benefits of it um, see how light it is and uh, how white that is compared to the beautiful amber tone that's going to come out of there i got i did get the truss rod from uh, Stu mac i got the frets from Stu mac so we'll be we'll be pressing frets and uh and doing a channel in channel down the down the front of it and uh, sandwiching that all up. But again, um, no warps, no cracks, roasted neck on the Traeger. Um, leave some feedback for me. Um, even if, you know, I don't know if, if you think I'm nuts, uh, tell me I'm nuts, but be civil about it. Uh, cause a couple of them were like, it hurt my feelings. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a roasted Traeger, a roasted Traeger, a roasted neck on my Traeger in my own backyard. Um, I think this is a whole new, um, a whole new channel of awesome things for the home luthier. 
Uh, again, uh, like, subscribe. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience with me. Uh, let's do wonderful things, man. Let's let's uh, let's build guitars. Uh, praying for you guys and the coronavirus and and all that that has to entail. I know everybody's hurting right now, and it's about it's gonna get real hurting. So uh, stay tuned for more stuff. Uh, I'll do, I'm going to do a carving video this, this afternoon. So that one will be next and then we'll, we'll get back to our, um, roasted neck. All right, guys. Peace out.